Here we are at Formby Golf Club, and usually here with my next guest, beating him on the golf course. But today I'm going to interview him about his Everton career and about his career in general. It is Mike Newell. Afternoon, Newley. Good afternoon, Snodge. We're How not are you? normally drinking this, are No, we? we're not. And we use, you're usually buying me a drink after I beat you on the golf course. But can we just start? How is your golf at the minute? My golf's not bad at the moment, Snodge. Um, I've had a, a bit of a layoff. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of coaching at Accrington Stanley. And uh, funny enough, the, the less I play, the, more, the better I get. Do you know what? That seems to be me. That seems mm. to be me. But uh, just, uh, just before we go into the uh, your things we have in, how is Accrington? How is John Coleman? Is it great Very to be good. back in football? Yeah, um, it came about from a meeting here actually. Um, the start of December, I met John at one of the carveries, Kenny Kenny's carvery, and um, he said, "Why don't you come in, get yourself out the house, do a little bit of coaching?" And it, I've been there virtually every day, going with them on trips. It's nice to be back involved. They haven't got much um, Accrington, um, never had, have had. Um, but they make the best of it, and there's a fantastic atmosphere, and they try and play football. Well, I want to start this interview by saying, uh, Newley, you were a Red mm -hmm. growing up in Liverpool. Um, how did you come to to play for Everton? But we'll start off, we'll start off growing up in Liverpool as a young kid because you went on signed for Liverpool. Yeah, I was with Liverpool from 12 years old. Um, never had academies that in them days. It was uh, basically. Uh, what would be School of Excellence. Um, I got a, an invite from John Benison, who used to run the youth teams down there then. And all they had in them days was an A and a B team um, that played professionally. Uh, so at 12 years old, you, you basically trained on a Tuesday and a Thursday night at Melwood. And uh, I trained there right up until I was 18 years old, but, but never got offered anything. I was never going to be. Um, I was never going to break through into their to their U teams or their their reserves, and um, it was probably the best thing that happened to me. So in between in between Liverpool as a young kid to signing for the Mighty Blues, mm. where did you where did you go from? What clubs were you in between? Well, I, re I got released from from Liverpool at 18 years old. I, I'd stayed on and done the A levels um, at SFX. They thought that was the best thing, rather than offer me a white tee and then not be able to offer you anything. And Dario Gradi had just took over at uh, Crew at the time, yeah. so he was he was asking Liverpool, asking Everton for any kids that you release, I'll take them on trial. He uh, he gave me a trial game, which was actually against Manchester United reserves, and he signed me that night uh, on a month-to-month -month contract. And within a week, I'd made my league debut. I played three games in the league for Crew. And within that month, Wigan Athletic had been watching me, Harry, Harry McNally. And at the end of that month, he obviously offered me a, another month. But uh, Wigan Athletic were a division above in the third division, and offered me a year's contract. And, and I, it, it was the year's contract that I wanted more than anything to mm. try and prove myself. You know, a little bit of time to try and prove myself. I was still growing, still filling out, and. Um, I went there. There was there was lads like Tony Kelly who had played with at Liverpool, David Lowe. All all they all went on to play um, or have good careers. Um, Steve Walsh who went on to Leicester, and um, so it was a great a great grounding for me. Uh, and after Wigan, you played so many games for them. After Wigan, where, where was it then on to? It, well, I signed for Luton then, who were in the the first division and who had a really good side. You know, the likes of Harford, um, Steve Foster. Mal Donaghy, uh, an art, an art Nick, side as well. Oh, art side, yeah, <laughs> a real, a real core right through them. Uh, Brian Steen, Ricky Hill, lads that went on and had real good careers. Played for the, for the not only an art country. side, but a good side as well. Good football, a good football side. Well, it was David Pleat at the time, and um, the manager, and he insisted on us playing football. We had a little bit of an advantage at the time at home. Uh, with the, the plastic, Astrid, with the Astrid. Astrid. I mean, nobody Senate liked it. Nobody liked it, but <laughs> but. Um, we got used to it. We, we we got used to passing on it, and we got used to training on it. So I, I had 18 months there. I then signed for Leicester, and um, it was from Leicester that uh, Colin Harvey come. So I, I, how did that come about, Colin? Because I was there at the time, obviously. Yeah. Uh, how, how did Colin approach you, or did they put a bid in first before they got the, to Well, they must have put a bid in. At, at, you wouldn't believe, I, I mean, the, the negotiations that go on nowadays and, and, <laughs> and the agents that get involved and, and 
the, the time that it takes to, to sign a player. I am not, no word of a lie, Colin Harvey rang me up. I was at home in Northampton where, where I lived playing for Leicester and Colin said, hello Mike, it's Colin Harvey. Now I knew what he was going to say yeah. because I'd never spoken to Colin or, or met Colin in my life before. Mm. So there'd been rumours of a, a bid coming in. He'd obviously had permission from David Cleet, who was the manager of uh, Leicester at the time, uh, to speak to me or, or to, to phone me. And he said, would you like to, to play for Everton? And I, I'd, I'd already made my mind up when he said, it's, it's Colin Harvey. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it was as simple as that for, for a lad who'd grown up in Liverpool, uh, not signed for Liverpool, um, but was desperate. And this was the one ambition that I had to play in a derby game. Yeah. Um, so so from, from Colin saying it's Colin Harvey, I'd, I'd almost signed. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd lift, and, and when he said, would you like to play for Everton? I said, Colin, I would love to play for Everton Football Club. And that was it. And I'm telling you now, I'd, I'd got in the car, I'd driven up to, to Liverpool, to my dad's house who lived in Liverpool, picked my dad up, and we were at Belfield within three hours of that phone call. And we'd signed. We, Tell a lie, we we hadn't signed because we had to go down to Goodison Park to sign the forms. Right. Jim Greenwood was the secretary. We'd agreed uh, personal terms within three hours of that phone call, and I was in Northampton when he rang me. It's absolutely incredible, isn't it? When you think yeah. of the of the modern contracts now, the agents involved, etc., and how yeah. it goes on for days and days, and as you said, from Colin Harvey ringing you to four hours later, you've signed the contract. Yeah. It, it just won't happen in today's football. Would it? Well, there, there was no, there was no other clubs involved. There was yeah. no, there was no me, me getting other clubs involved or thinking about other options. I didn't want another option. It mm. was, it was done and dusted, and and I couldn't wait to sign the paper. And that's where I want to talk about your affinity then. Mm. When you sign for a club, whether it be Everton, whether you're a Man City fan and you sign for Man United, your allegiance stops yeah. towards that football club because when yeah. you play against them, you want to score against them. You, you, you celebrate yeah. when you score. So I remember one when you first come, one of the first games, what a derby game. Yeah. And you happened to score for once. I had to <laughs> score. Not my first time no, against it, Liverpool. Though. No. Uh, no, you're exactly right. Um, it's not that you want to prove them wrong um, for letting you know, you go. For, for letting you know. it, it, there was not, none of that involved. I'd, I'd grown up as a Liverpool fan, and any Liverpool or Everton fan, uh, or particularly a kid growing up, there's been millions of them played for the other club that they've supported. You know, the likes of Michael Owen, Ian Rush, uh, McManaman, and then you go the other the other side. There's been plenty of who've played for the other yeah. side. It's. Um, you, you, if you get the opportunity to play pro professional football, and particularly for one of these clubs, it, it doesn't even come into it no. your, your allegiance. No. And, and blood's thicker than water. Um, there, there are families that are split, um, but, but my dad and my brother were all Liverpool fans. As soon as you sign for Everton, they don't start supporting Everton, no. but they, start, they, they want you to do well. Correct. So I'd, I'd been lucky, I'd, be, I'd, been, I'd played against Liverpool previously for Luton and I'd managed to score a trick against them. Um, I'd scored in the cup game that had knocked them out when we beat them 3-0. So I'd had, I'd had a... Uh, I, I don't know whether it brings the best out of you playing against the side that you support yeah. or wanting to do well. But as you said, I was 17 minutes I'd scored um, at Goodison. Uh, the, the most nervous day of my life. I mean, the nerves stop as soon as you, the whistle goes yeah. at three o'clock. Yeah. But the build up to it and the, 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 the anticipation of playing in your first derby. Just, just explain to us as a, as a lad growing up in Liverpool what, what it means as a Liverpool kid playing in the Merseyside derby. Well, it must I be think... incredible. It is incredible for me. I played in, yeah. in numerous, but I was from, from think, Yorkshire. Well, well, for anybody, any kid who grows up in the city, if you're a Glasgow lad and you, you play for Celtic or Rangers or Manchester or it's a, a Tottenham Arsenal game, it, surely it's got to be the, it's got to be the same. Mm. It, it's all that people talk about, particularly in this city. Yeah. And um, it, 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 I don't know. It, it, it's everything, and, and and just just pulling the shirt on, and you know. It, it, that hour before, and we we were actually top of the league. It was September, and we played I don't know seven, eight, nine games, something like that. And we were top of the league, and Liverpool was second. 
and so you, you can't get a bigger no. derby. No. Uh, the ground was bouncing. We were in the dressing rooms. You didn't warm up a lot the way no, you they warmed no. up these days. So you're sitting down there and you're reading a programme or you're, you're doing your stretches and whatever. And the, you can feel the ground physically yeah. bouncing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, it says it's a weird <laughs> feeling. But you, you're like that and you yeah. three or four visits to the toilet. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's fantastic. It was, it was everything that I wanted. You know, we didn't get the results. And the, but, but to score after 17 minutes, what a feeling. Yeah, it must have been a great feeling. But I, I remember being injured one particularly derby game. And it perhaps it was the greatest derby game I've ever watched. Mm. We watched one uh, the other year, the three-all draw, and it was a fantastic game. But the one at Goodison in the cup, the yeah. four-all, oh. was absolutely seesaw. Every mm. minute of the game, something was happening. It must have been yeah. a fantastic game to well, play in. It, 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 I don't know what, what we're talking now, 90, 1991. Mm. It, it's, it was tw four, 24 years ago, yeah. and you remember it. And you remember every goal like it was yesterday. Mm. Um, I'd, I'd been suspended for the the first game. You know, not many people remember that there was a nil nil at Anfield mm. uh, for the first game, and I'd been suspended. And it was the best result ever for, me. <laughs> for a replay. For the re well, for the replay, yeah. Because yeah. you know, even if we'd knocked them out, yeah. I'd have been a bit gutted that I hadn't played in the derby in the FA Cup. Yeah. So the nil nil was a, all I wanted them was to get in the, in the team. And Howard's put me in 4-4. Uh, We've been behind, behind four yeah. times. Uh, they've scored four man magnificent goals, and we've scored <laughs> yeah. four scrappy <laughs> goals. If yeah, you like we did. it. So, it, it, but but we were never out of it. We were never out of it. And then Tony Tony Cottage come on in the last. I don't know what was it. Yeah. 15, 20 minutes, or, or was it longer than that? Was it extra time? That's right. When no extra time. And he's, he's scored the last two goals, goes to a replay. I've never known a demand for tickets in the city <laughs> it was. in my life yeah. like it. it yeah. was, and and I, I, I must have had to get 50 by 50 tickets for friends and family. The, I mean, the, there were obviously people who weren't at that game mm. who, who were desperate not to miss the, the next game. And in the meantime, Kenny had retired. That's right, he resigned. Uh, yeah. resigned. Um, and Waggy scored the uh, the winner in the, the game in the, the game replay, yeah, in, in replay. We were we were through to play West. One of the in, best games you played in. The four four. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It, it, throughout it your career, I'm not just on about your Everton career. Throughout your career, that must have been one. Yeah, with, without because of the atmosphere, yeah. because of what it meant. Yeah. Um, it was end to end. We were never out of it, and and just the actual the ending the ending at at, at the end of that game, and the ending. Going through knocking them out of the cup a week yeah. later, it's it, you know, it'll stick with you forever, yeah.